In this module we will continue our discussion of regression. In this first section we will talk about simple logistic regression which is similar to simple linear regression but intended for use with binary outcomes instead of continuous outcomes. Later in the module we will move beyond single variable regression models and provide a brief introduction to multivariable linear and logistic regression models. Previously we discussed using simple linear regression to predict percentage body fat using abdomen circumference. Here we have the fitted regression lines superimposed on the scatter plot diagram. We discussed the equation of a line and that the least squares method is used to determine the estimated values of the intercept denoted as B and slope denoted as M in the population that best predicts Y from X. Before moving on to discuss logistic regression, I want to introduce new notation for the intercept and slope that is more generally used in textbooks and the literature to describe independent variables in a regression model. For the rest of the course, we will use beta notation. All parameters in the model are represented as betas with numerically ascending subscripts. Beta 0 always represents the intercept. Beta 1 represents the slope associated with the independent variable being used to predict the, de the dependent variable. As we will see, this notation becomes very convenient when we generalize our models to include more than one independent or predictor variable. Each predictor in the model will have an associated slope that describes the linear relationship between the predictor and the outcome of interest. Let's put discussion of multivariable regression on hold for a little bit and focus on simple logistic regression. We will use the low birth weight data to illustrate the basic ideas of simple logistic regression. The goal of this study was to identify risk factors associated with giving birth to a low birth weight baby defined as weighing less than 2500 grams among women being seen in the obstetrics clinic at Bay State Medical Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. Data were collected on 189 women, 59 of which had low birth weight babies and 130 of which had normal birth weight babies. Some of the variables collected which have been shown in the obstetrics literature to be associated with low birth weight were age, weight of the subject at her last menstrual period, race, smoking status, and the number of physician visits during the first trimester of pregnancy. This data set was actually originally collected in the mid-1980s, so it was somewhat dated. However, it has been used extensively over the years as a teaching tool to illustrate complicated logistic regression concepts. We won't delve into any of those issues here, and we keep the discussion focused on core concepts of the logistic regression model. The outcome of interest, birth weight, is obviously not a naturally dichotomous variable. However, it is common and useful to dichotomize naturally continuous variables at clinically motivated thresholds. We see 59 out of 189, or 31% of women, gave birth to babies weighing less than 2,500 grams. We will consider two different independent variables or predictor variables in this data set. The first is weight in pounds of the mother at her last menstrual period. We see that the sample mean weight is 129.81 pounds with a standard deviation of approximately 31 pounds. The second variable is smoking status of the mother during pregnancy. We see that 74 out of 189 or 39 percent of women in the sample smoked during pregnancy. Our initial goal is to discuss simple logistic regression, so we will focus on examining the relationship between a single independent variable with the outcome of interest, low birth weight. In this section, we will focus on weight at the last menstrual period. Then in the next section, which is the StatCrunch demo, two models will be discussed, the weight model and a separate model examining the relationship between smoking status and low birth weight. We have purposely selected one continuous and one binary independent variable in order to illustrate the difference in interpretation associated with each in the context of logistic regression. In general, the independent variable can be continuous, ordinal, categorical, or binary. Later in this module, we will discuss multiple logistic regression where the model contains more than one independent variable. For the low birth weight data, 
we will examine a model that contains both weight at last menstrual period and smoking status and examine their relationship to low birth weight. Looking at weight and low birth weight, let's proceed as we would with simple linear regression. We first create a scatter plot diagram with the dependent variable low birth weight, yes, no, on the vertical axis and the independent variable weight on the horizontal axis. The scatter plot is not very helpful. The dependent variable can only take on two values, 0 indicating normal birth weight and 1 indicating low birth weight. It's clear that we cannot model a simple linear relationship in this context as we could with simple linear regression where we had two continuous variables. First, let's think about what the question of interest is. In linear regression, the fitted line was used to predict the mean value of the dependent variable for a given value of the independent variable. We would like to do this, the same thing here. However, with the dichotomous dependent variable, rather than the mean value of the dependent variable, we are interested in the probability of experiencing the outcome of interest, here low birth weight, for a given value of the independent variable, here weight. This S-shaped plot illustrates the relationship between a predictor, X, and the probability of experiencing the outcome of interest for a dichotomous dependent variable, usually denoted by the Greek letter pi. Notice that the line shown is bounded below by 0 and above by 1, which is appropriate since we are interested in predicting the value of a probability which naturally ranges between 0 and 1. We can mathematically describe this curve with the equation pi, or the probability of success, is equal to 1 divided by the expression 1 plus the quantity e to the minus beta 0 plus beta 1x. Here, e refers to the mathematical function known as the exponential function. We do see the familiar equation for a line, beta 0 plus beta 1x, but it's tucked away in the exponential function. It would be convenient if we could somehow transform this nonlinear S-curve relationship between the predictor and outcome, or pi as we are calling it here, so that it was a simple linear relationship like that used in simple linear regression. Then we would be in the familiar context of estimating intercepts and slopes for the equation of a straight line. Fortunately, there is a convenient way to transform this to a linear relationship using what is called the logistic function. If we apply the logistic function to the probability values graphed in this figure and then plot those new values on the vertical axis versus the values of the predictor on the x-axis, we obtain the following figure. Applying the logistic function to the probabilities is generally referred to as taking the logit, and we refer to the new set of y values as the logit of the probability of experiencing the outcome of interest, or simply as the logit of pi. We can mathematically describe the logit function with this expression. The logit of pi is equal to the log of the quantity pi divided by 1 minus pi, which is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1x, our familiar equation for a simple straight line. Given this linear relationship between the logit of pi and the predictor x, we can now proceed as we did with linear regression and estimate the usual intercept and slope parameters. Because the logit function transform probabilities to the log scale, our linearity assumption about the relationship between y and x is now also on the log scale. You will often hear people refer to this as linearity in the logit assumption when talking about logistic regression. Note also that because our linear relationship utilizes the logit function, our regression estimates will be on the log scale, which will impact the interpretation of the coefficients. We can show these relationships graphically using a figure taken from the simple linear regression lecture. The interpretation of the intercept beta 0 and the slope beta 1 are identical to the interpretation in the linear regression context except for the fact that our dependent variable here is measured on the logit scale. 
The intercept beta 0 is represented by the distance from the x-axis to the point where the orange line crosses the y-axis. And the slope is represented by the red distance indicating the change in height of the orange line for each one unit change in the value of x. For the low birth weight model, the slope would represent the change in the logit of pi, meaning the change in the logit of the probability of being low birth weight for each one pound change in weight at the last menstrual period. In a similar fashion to linear regression, to determine the estimated logit of pi associated with a particular weight, simply replace the x in the equation with the weight value of interest, multiply it by the slope, and add the intercept. As with linear regression, the primary inference in the model is whether or not the slope coefficient is zero. The big question you should be asking yourself at this point is, how exactly do I make sense of and interpret changes in the logit of pi? That's a very good question. As it turns out, a simple transformation of the slope estimate on the logit scale has a reasonably intuitive interpretation as an odds ratio. Here is the fitted regression line for the low birth weight and weight at last menstrual period model. The logit of pi is equal to 0 0.998 minus 0 0.014 times weight. In order to transform this slope estimate to an odds ratio, simply exponentiate the slope coefficient. e raised to the minus 0 0.014 power yields an odds ratio of 0 0.986. The appropriate interpretation of this odds ratio is as follows. The odds of having a low birth weight baby are 0 0.986 times the odds of having a normal birth weight baby for each one pound increase in weight at the last menstrual period. Thus, the higher the weight at the last menstrual period, the lower the odds of having a low birth weight baby. We have stressed using confidence intervals in association with parameter estimates. If the statistical software output provides the confidence limits for the slope on the logit scale, you can obtain the lower confidence limit and upper confidence limit for the odds ratio simply by exponentiating them. Now we have an odds ratio based on a one pound change in weight. It is often the case that the natural scale of the independent variable is too small to be considered clinically important. We can rescale the odds ratio to reflect a larger increment of the continuous variable in question. For example, let's rescale the odds ratio to reflect a 5 pound change in weight. To do this, we simply exponentiate the value of the original slope coefficient on the logit scale multiplied by the desired numerical increment for a clinically meaningful interpretation. The correct interpretation of this rescaled odds ratio is the odds of having a low birth weight baby are 0 0.93 times the odds of having a normal birth weight baby for each five pound increase in weight at last menstrual period. In order to calculate the rescaled confidence limits, we simply exponentiate the LCL and UCL on the logit scale each multiplied by the same constant increment. As it turns out, the StatCrunch logistic regression output provides the slope estimate on the logit scale, the odds ratio for the slope estimate, and the associated 95% confidence interval for the odds ratio. It does not provide the confidence limits on the logit scale. To rescale the odds ratio and its associated confidence interval, you would need to calculate the confidence limits on the logit scale manually and exponentiate them. We will show how to do this during the StatCrunch demonstration. Let's talk a little about evaluating and interpreting the general results of a simple logistic regression model. The primary interest is the test statistic corresponding to whether or not the slope associated with weight at last menstrual period is zero or not. The test statistic provided by StatCrunch is a Z statistic equal to minus 2.28 with a corresponding p-value of 0 0.02. The p-value for the slope is less than 0.05, indicating a statistically significant result. We therefore conclude that the population slope for weight at last menstrual period is non-zero. 
For reporting and evaluating the clinical implications of the results, it is generally preferred to report the results in terms of odds ratios as opposed to the logit scale slope estimates. We again use a similar approach to previous tests. Report the odds ratio estimate of 0 0.986. Report a 95% confidence interval for the odds ratio from 0 0.974 to 0 0.998. Report the p-value of 0 0.02. We should emphasize that for continuous independent variables, the interpretation of the odds ratio is dependent on the linearity in the logit assumption. That is, the that the association between the independent and dependent variable is constant across all values of the independent variable. Although we will discuss the simple logistic regression model examining the relationship between low birth weight and smoking status in the StatCrunch demo, let's say a few words about categorical independent variables here. The exponentiation of the slope coefficient of a dichotomous variable has an odds ratio interpretation analogous of that for a continuous variable. For example, for smoking status, the interpretation would be something like the odds of low birth weight for smokers are 2.02 times the odds for non-smokers. Additionally, there is no linearity in the logit assumption needed for a dichotomous independent variable for validity of its interpretation. Let's discuss the assumptions of simple logistic regression. First, the dependent variable is dichotomous. We note that there are generalizations of the logistic model to more than two categories, but discussion of this is beyond the scope of this course. We assume linearity in the logit for continuous independent variables. The challenge with this assumption is that most software packages don't provide an assessment of this assumption automatically as is usually done with linearity in the case of linear regression. Linearity is not an issue for dichotomous or multi-category variables. Lastly, note that there are no Gaussian assumptions on the distribution of the residuals in logistic regression like there is in linear regression. That's all for now.